Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Holy Paladins in Shadowlands. If you've been keeping up with our tier lists, it'll be no surprise that Holy Paladins are currently shaping up to be one of the weakest healers. But with Paladin class changes likely to happen soon, we're hopeful that there will be a few improvements to bring Holy Paladins closer in strength to the other healers. For now though, we've teamed up with Born Good to cover all the basics to help you get started with your own Holy Paladins the moment Season 1 of Shadowlands begins, including the best races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries. Then, around the time Season 1 starts, we'll release a refresher guide that will cover any outdated information in this guide, including the upcoming Paladin changes, along with a more advanced look at how to perfect your playstyle and what your best comps are. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified the moment those guides are released. To get things started, let's take a look at two of the biggest changes for Holy Paladins moving from BFA into Shadowlands. First, we've seen the return of Holy Power to all Paladin specs, which Holy Paladins generate with Crusader Strike, Holy Shock, Bestow Faith, and by casting Flash of Light and Holy Light into their Beacon of Light target. Holy Power can be spent on Word of Glory and Light of Dawn, although it will mostly be used on Word of Glory. This means Holy Paladins not only received a buff to their mana management by getting a heal that's free to cast, but they'll also have an additional way to deal with interrupts given that Word of Glory is an instant heal. The other big change that Holy Paladins have seen is a redesign to Infusion of Light. Previously in BFA, Infusion of Light procs would either reduce the cast time of Holy Light or increase the healing of Flash of Light. This meant that Holy Paladins had an extremely mana efficient way to heal for a large amount by using all of their Infusion of Light procs on a low mana cost Holy Light. In Shadowlands, Infusion of Light has been changed to instead reduce the mana cost of Flash of Light or increase the healing of Holy Light. This is effectively a nerf to Infusion of Light as Holy Paladins no longer have a way to reduce the cast time of their largest and most mana efficient heal, Holy Light. Alright, so how are these changes going to impact your playstyle? Well, first and foremost, the return of Holy Power means that your entire healing rotation will essentially be based around generating and spending Holy Power. And as previously mentioned, you've got a handful of ways to generate Holy Power, including both a mix of instant and casted spells. With that in mind, Holy Paladins can then opt for two different playstyles, either sticking to the more traditional healer role by casting heals from range while utilizing a pillar, or they can opt for a more aggressive playstyle, making use of instant casts while staying in melee range. As for how good Holy Paladins are right now, while your toolkit remains as strong as ever with talents like Ultimate Sacrifice and Divine Vision continuing to give Paladins a reliable way to deal with incoming damage, along with the return of Concentration Aura playing a pivotal role in helping you and your team deal with interrupts and silences, Holy Paladins throughput is seemingly at an all-time low. The redesign of Infusion of Light means that you can no longer rely on exclusively casting high healing Holy Lights which in turn is an indirect nerf to the PvP talent Light's Graves, which was a major factor in a Holy Paladin's viability. Instead, you're forced to cast Flash of Light more often, leaving you with much less throughput than before. And although Holy Light still has its place, the really long cast that can no longer be reduced makes healing as a Holy Paladin feel clunky in comparison to BFA. This leads us to believe that Holy Paladins need some form of buff to their healing output. Assuming that we don't see a revert to the Infusion of Light change, Great changes would be to increase Holy Power generation or to simply buff the healing of Holy Shock and Flash of Light to make it easier for Paladins to keep up with the high pace of damage and bring Holy Paladins more in line with the throughput that other healers currently offer. Alright, now that you're up to speed on where Holy Paladins currently stand in Shadowlands, let's go over everything that you need to know to get started with your own Holy Paladins the moment Season 1 of Shadowlands begins. Starting with your best race, it shouldn't be a surprise that Human continues to be the standout pick for Alliance, given that you're able to play with Relentless while still having a way to break out of stuns, something that no other race can do. This can be crucial when facing classes that have plenty of easy to land and consistent CC for you, usually against mages, warlocks, and hunters. The Human Spirit is then the icing on the cake for the additional secondary stats. Although, both Dwarf and Dark Iron Dwarf are also competitive choices when facing Shadow Priests, Balanced Druids, and even Affliction Warlocks to remove Silence, Root Beam, and the Silence effects from dispelling Unstable Affliction. As for those playing Horde, we recommend picking up Torin as you gain access to War Stomp, a versatile ability that can be used both offensively and defensively. 
Alternatively, Blood Elf has its place, especially when facing other Holy Paladins to try and purge important buffs like Divine Favor or Blessing of Protection and Freedom. Alright, next up, let's go over each of your talents and discuss what your best ones are and why that's the case. Starting in the level 15 row, Bestow Faith is the winner, not only for the additional instant heal, but also for the fact that it generates Holy Power. Alternatively, in matchups that have limited CC for you, Crusader's Might has its place as you can stay in melee range without being punished. Next, in the level 25 row, we see the return of an old Holy Paladin mechanic, Saved by the Light. This works by granting your Beacon of Light target an Absorb Shield when they drop below 30% HP, and it even works on your second Beacon target if you pick up Beacon of Faith. While the strength of this talent alone is reason enough to pick it up, your other two options don't provide much healing, making this an easy choice. The level 30 row sees three equally viable options, each of which have their place depending on the comp that you're playing and playing against. Fist of Justice can be taken as your default choice, given that it will pretty much always provide some value, especially when playing in caster cleaves that lack stuns of their own. You'll then want to play Blinding Light in comps that have plenty of their own CC, for example when playing with a Rogue and Mage. Repentance can then be considered when playing compositions that lack their own CC, for example when you're paired up with a Warrior and Warlock to get CC chains on healers. Next, in the level 35 row, we're currently recommending Cavalier because of how fast-paced Arena currently is. If things slow down and games start to last longer, Unbreakable Spirit will return as your best option. But given the current pacing, you're unlikely to have time to use two Divine Shields, meaning that you get more value out of having two charges of Divine Steed. Moving down into the level 40 row, Seraphim is looking to be your best pick. While it does cost 3 Holy Power, given the lackluster healing that Word of Glory currently provides, you're not missing out on too much by spending some Holy Power on Seraphim. Still though, Divine Purpose is a close second if you prefer to play without Seraphim or if you're worried about being CC'd while it's up. Holy Avenger, on the other hand, has too long of a cooldown to warrant being taken over your other two options. In the level 45 row, Avenging Crusader is shaping up to be your best talent. Due to how weak Holy Paladin throughput is right now, picking up what's known as Melee Wings gives you a massive burst of AoE healing every time it's up. Although the high mana cost usually prevents players from picking this up, the fast-paced state of Arena right now means that mana is less of an issue, and increasing your throughput becomes the priority. Both of your other options, Sanctified Wrath and Awakening, just augment your standard Avenging Wrath, and again, because of your low healing throughput, they lose a lot of value. The final Final talent row sees Beacon of Faith as your optimal choice. Not only does it increase your overall healing by healing the two targets with your beacon, but it also increases your holy power generation, giving you more throughput by letting you use Word of Glory more often. Plus, when compared to your other two options, both Glimmer of Light, inspired by the Azerite trait of the same name in BFA, and Beacon of Virtue simply don't offer as much throughput as Beacon of Faith. Alright, so with your standard talents out of the way, let's take a look at what PvP talents you should pick up. First, Divine Favor should be taken to every matchup, regardless of what you're facing. Not only does it give you a way to deal with interrupts, it still increases your healing and helps with mana efficiency. It also introduces a style of healing similar to that of a Holy Priest, casting Greater Heal by giving you the option to pair Divine Favor with an Infusion of Light proc to cast a huge Holy Light. Next up, Blessed Hands is extremely strong right now given how stacked the meta is with sub rogues and MM hunters. Be sure to always pick this up against these heavy physical damage dealing comps. And Ultimate Sacrifice continues to be a strong pick into classes with really high burst. So rogues, hunters, elemental shamans, etc. Without this, you'll really struggle to keep your team alive through those high burst comps. Outside of these three main PvP talents, there are a handful of other options that you may want to consider swapping to against some compositions. First, when facing Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests, Divine Vision is a great pick for the flat 15% reduction to their dot damage. Cleanse the Weak also pairs well with Divine Vision against these dot classes. Finally, while Light's Grace used to be a staple of your toolkit, the fact that Holy Paladins no longer rely on just Holy Light means that you're much less likely to pick this talent up, but it may still be worth considering in some matchups if you want to just sit back and cast Holy Lights, so mostly against comps with limited CC and interrupts for you. Okay. So you've hit max level and you've got the right set of talents. What's next? Well, if you've been around since Legion, you'll be incredibly familiar with the term Borrowed Power, which is set to continue into Shadowlands. You'll need to start by choosing the best covenant for your class, which will give you access to two abilities among a whole host of other perks that we'll cover after this section. 
Currently, we're recommending the Venthyr as the best overall covenant for Holy Paladins. This choice actually isn't because of either of the active abilities you get, but instead because of the Soulbind ability Familiar Predicaments, which stacks alongside Concentration Aura to make interrupts very easy to deal with. Although, if you're not feeling the Venthyr and want to go another way, the Necro Lords are looking to be your best offensive option after the recent damage buff to Vanquisher's Hammer, and the Curian are looking to be your best defensive option because of Divine Toll. This ability gives you a decent burst of healing and holy power generation every minute, making your healing output a little less clunky, and it can even be used while locked on holy. Still though, we do suggest going Venthyr because of that Soulbind ability, Familiar Predicaments. Okay, so we keep mentioning the term Soulbind ability. What actually are Soulbinds? Well, after selecting your Covenant, you'll unlock Soulbinds, which are essentially skill trees that you'll be progressing through as you journey through Shadowlands. If you choose the Venthyr as your Covenant, you'll want to go with Nagia as your Soulbind for competitive PvP as you gain access to that Soulbind ability that we keep mentioning, Familiar Predicaments. While most casters are already looking to go with the Venthyr as their Covenant just because of this Soulbind ability, the fact that it stacks with Concentration Aura makes it even more potent for Holy Paladins. Next, you'll also need to pick up a bunch of conduits that fit into your Soulbind tree, which are split up into three different categories, Potency, Finesse, and Endurance. Your ideal build sees you pick up two Potency conduits, one Finesse, and one Endurance. Pure Concentration should always be taken as your one Finesse conduit to reduce the duration of incoming fears, giving Holy Paladins an even better matchup into Priests and Warlocks. The only other finesse conduit worth mentioning is Light's Barding, which has its place in fast-paced matchups against teams without fear. As for your two potency conduits, you'll want to pick up your Covenant-specific conduit, so Hallowed Discernment for Venthyr, Righteous Might for Necrolord, and Ringing Clarity for Kyrian. These simply buff your Covenant class ability and provide more value than most of your potency conduits. Untempered Dedication should then be chosen as your second potency conduit, and can be used to increase your instant healing throughput. The final potency conduit to look at is Focused Light for the increased crit chance to Holy Shock, increasing the likelihood that you'll get Infusion of Light procs. We recommend going with Shielding Words as your one Endurance conduit to slightly increase Word of Glory's power, although Divine Call can also be considered if you want to decrease the cooldown of your Divine Shield. This also has great synergy with the Unbreakable Spirit talent and may become the best option down the line if the pacing of Arena slows down. With all of that being said, this leaves our current suggested build looking like this. With your Covenant-specific Potency Conduit being taken alongside Pure Concentration, Untempered Dedication, and Shielding Words. Alright, and the final step that you'll need to take is to pick up your best Legendary. For those of you that go with the Venthyr, Vanguard's Momentum is looking to be your best pick for the increased offensive capabilities it provides given that it has excellent synergy with Ash and Hallow. This is because Ash and Hallow increases the damage of Hammer of Wrath by 100% when positioned on top of it, and you'll gain 3 charges of Hammer of Wrath when using this Legendary. As a bonus, you'll also be able to use Hammer of Wrath at all times while Avenging Wrath is up, making you even more of an offensive threat during Avenging Crusader. Alternatively, Inflorescence of the Sunwell works well for all Covenant choices and further plays into the pseudo greater heal build by giving you an additional infusion of light proc and increasing the healing bonus to holy light even more. And finally, if you go Necrolord, you may also want to consider using Shadowbreaker as it has excellent synergy with the Necrolord Paladin class ability, Vanquisher's Hammer. Alright everyone, that concludes our first look at Holy Paladins in Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need to get started in Season 1. And be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include updates to the information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and what your best comps are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.